engine size, vehicle size, performance, model year, batteries and electrification. These are what come to mind when you think of the factors that determine how efficient a vehicle is. But what about glass and paint? LED lights or one of those goofy little solar panels on the roof? These are all part of a lesser known batch of efficiencies called off-cycle technology because their benefits don't really show up in the standard EPA test cycle. And they also include some better known technologies like auto start stop or those aerodynamic grills that open and close uh, in front of your car. Now let me guess, right about now you're thinking the contribution of things like reflective painting glass and cooling seats and, and other technologies that grant better efficiency by just taxing the AC and the alternator a little bit less are only of interest to a few EV1 lamenting hypermiling geeks. Think again. Ford, General Motors, Fiat, Chrysler, all seeking expanded credits from the US EPA for the progress they've made in using such technology. Now, as you can see, the efficiencies from these are small. A 2015 Ford Fusion, for example, with the smallest engine, puts out 303 grams of CO2 per mile. But across a large fleet of annual sales, every bit of CO2 credit can add up. The US has ever-increasing annual standards for fleet MPG, you probably know about that, but also for fleet CO2 emissions. You may not know about that. Miss the goals, pay a fine. Now they've got car makers' attention, and part of that attention then gets directed to off-cycle technology that can help them make the mark. But if a car maker is given credit for these off-cycle efficiencies from the EPA, if it improves CO2, and from NHTSA, if it improves MPG, it might be just enough to meet the goals in a given year, or even exceed them, in which case the car maker can bank the excess and use it in a later year if it fails to meet the standard. So the next time you're shopping for a new car and marveling how many of them offer things like cooled seats, maybe it's not that they want to keep your butt cool, but keep their relationship with regulators warm. More car tech demystified right now at CNETOnCars.com. Click on CarTech 101.